Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for stopping by the channel and making it your new spot for cyber and network knowledge. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something that strikes fear into the heart of both seasoned and new IT folks alike, and that is IPv6. <laughs> And while IPv6 is new to a lot of folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through step by step some high level points and show you how it's really not that terrifying compared to regular IPv4 addresses. But before we do that, make sure you hit the like button. And if this is your first time on the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe and notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any new content when I drop new videos. All right, let's go tackle IPv6. All right, so the big bad IPv6. We're gonna talk a little bit about comparing and contrasting it with IPv4. We're gonna go into kind of what makes up the address and the different sections. Uh, not gonna hit so much on the actual difference in functionality, although I will drop some images in here uh, to kind of go over the differences between some of the configuration services that go along with ipv6 versus ipv4 but really today we're focusing more on understanding the address layout from a subnetting perspective so the main thing that we're going to realize right off the bat is just a sheer size and the difference between ipv6 and v4 the reason why ipv6 has so much space is because we needed to come up with a solution to overcome the fact that we would eventually be out of IPv4 public space, which we are pretty much at this point already. And so the difference here is IPv4, as you know, is made up of 32 bits. IPv6 is made up of 128 bits. And the difference between that is IPv4 has a total of 4.3 billion possible IP addresses, where IPv6 has 340 undecillion IP addresses. I have no idea how much undecillion is. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. It is such a big number. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's just massive. Really, you're looking at the difference between 2 to the power of 32 versus 2 to the power of 128. You can run that through your calculator if you want to. It probably will start smoking and it probably will break down. But just for a point of reference, I'll put up an image here to kind of show you the, the difference in sizes. So in dealing with IP addresses that are that big and making it manageable from the perspective of being able to, to write and utilize um, some way of identifying these values, IPv6 is in hexadecimal format compared to IPv4, which is in binary. For those not familiar with hexadecimal format, instead of uh, a binary number having two different possible values, a hexadecimal digit has 16 possible values, it's alphanumeric, starts at zero, goes through nine, and then switches to A through F for a total of 16 possible values. When we were looking at IPv4, it was four different octets, each making up uh, eight bits each. In IPv6, it's made up of eight 16-bit groups. If we look at this IP address down here, similar to IPv4, it has a network section and a host section. But unlike IPv4, there's also a subnetting section. So in general, an ISP will give a site a slash 48 subnet. If you take that slash 48 subnet and you break it up evenly into uh, slash 64 subnets, that will give you a mind-boggling 65,536 slash 64 subnets that you can mess around with. You could subnet those even smaller if you want to, but with 65,000 subnets and this number of hosts per subnet, there's no real reason why you need to rack your brain or melt down your calculator really trying to uh, break those subnets down into, into something smaller. So down below here, we kind of go into uh, a breakdown of the different sections within the uh, IPv6 address. One of the things to mention when we're looking at the IP address section breakdowns down here is that these numbers are identifying the different uh, bits that are able to make up 
the different sections, but that doesn't mean that necessarily that each of the individual sections is always going to be that full amount of the bit. So for instance, the ISP section, or more officially the LIR section, isn't going to be, or doesn't have to be a full 32 bits to make up whatever that value is. And same thing with the, the site sections and the subnet sections. So obviously, depending upon what you are going to be doing and how it's broken up, these there is some leeway to play with each of these. Um, a slash 48 as I mentioned, is um, the most common for what's uh, handed out by ISPs for a site. But uh, there are different recommendations. So for small offices or home offices, the recommendation might be instead of a slash 48, a slash 56. It really depends. So one of the secondary side effects of having these larger amounts of subnets to hand out to organizations is the fact that it minimizes and gets rid of the problem of routing fragmentation, which would be if you are an organization and you go and get a whole lot of different slash 24s or slash 22s from your ISP. Um, if you do that over the course of a few different years, you aren't going to get contiguous IP space, which means that the routing tables across the internet need to have more entries for all of these disparate subnets. IPv6, since we're giving you right off the bat a slash 48 or a slash 56, that's going to be enough space for you and your organization forever. So if we continue and look kind of at how this is broken out, so we, we have this IP address up here and I kind of broke it down into the different sections. In this case, we're talking about the first uh, 32 bits being uh, for the ISP section or the LIR. So it would be this 2001 colon zero DB eight. And then the site section would be four eight five a three. And the subnet section here is all zeros. And then we get into the host section. And this is broken down for a slash uh, 64 subnet, meaning that the rest of these bits, these 64 bits, would be uh, what would be for all the hosts. If we were going to then break that up and go to the next subnet available within there, we would add a one in place of the zero here. And we need another subnet, we can add a two instead and three, and we could just progressively keep adding more and more within those 16 bits. And so as I mentioned, this being uh, broken up as a slash 48, really the only things that are configurable here is going to be the subnet section and then the host IP section. The ISP section is locked in and the site section is locked in. So that's a really straightforward and easy way to look at that. As long as you're taking a slash 48, you're only going to be messing with these 16 bits for your subnet section and then whatever the the IP addresses are going to be in the host section. So then if we were to look at how this would be written out, we would have this whole number here and then your forward slash and 64 at the end of that, since this is going to be a 64-bit uh, subnet mask. Two other uh, cool things to note is that there's kind of a way to minimize the amount of space that these uh, IP addresses take when writing them out. Uh, the first way is that you can actually omit zeros that are in um, the particular uh, groups if the group is starting with a zero. So for instance, this 0370, we actually could get rid of that zero and it would just be colon 370. Uh, need to point out though, we can't get rid of the, the zero after the seven though. So it's only zeros that are at the beginning um, and proceeding through. So if it was zero, zero, seven, zero, we could get rid of the first two zeros and it would just be written as seven, zero. So a second cool thing that you can do is you can get rid of a whole 16 bit group if it's all made up of zeros. And so you just remove that and what you're left with is two 
pairs of colons. So we could get rid of this group and we could get rid of this group and the IP address at that point would go 85 alpha 3 colon colon 8A2E and keep going. So being able to minimize the zeros in the IPv6 address gives you a good way to be able to write it shorthand. So that wraps up IPv6. We all survived. No one passed out, hopefully. Put a comment down below to let me know you're still alive. You're good. All right. But if you do have any questions, please put those down below as well, and I'll get back to you, and we'll try and talk through whatever uh, concerns or things that you need to work through to make sure that you really understand what's going on with IPv6. As always, if there's other topics that you want me to cover in future videos, throw those down below as well. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Go get at it, be safe, and we'll talk soon. Take care.